Greetings class, this is Dr. York Hammonds again. In this particular video, I'd like to open data from my Stat Lab homework screen and create a dot plot of the data and then analyze the information that we see. I have uh, looked at another study plan question Chapter 2, Section 2, this one would be uh, similar to question 23 on the review exercise for uh, Chapter 2, Section 2. Similar uh, to what we did in the previous video, you notice the little double boxes right beside the data here. If I click on that, I get a drop-down list, and I'm going to open my data in StatCrunch. So I'm going to click on that option. And you see that your data has been uploaded into the first column. Now these are temperatures, high temperatures. So if you want to go ahead and label it, or you can just put temp if that helps you um, keep track of what your data is. It's a little difficult to see both of these screens. So I was going to see if I could get them to go side by side in this video. So I'm going to click on the blue um, top portion of my homework screen and drag it to the left and let it go and it takes up about half the page. If I click on the blue top to my stat lab, I'm going to take it to the far right and click and then they both open up and take up pretty much the full page. I might be able to get it to come in a little bit, but I think you can see both now. So here's the data and there were 14 consecutive days that we check temperature. Now the dot plot, just like the stem and leaf plot, is found under the graph menu. So I'm going to click on graph. I'm going to click on graph and I'm going to scroll down to dot plot and click. I have to select my column. It's in the blue. When I click on it, it now shows up in the white. So I'm going to be using the data in the temperature file and I'm uh, just going to go ahead and compute. So I click on compute and this is the plot that you see. Now you'll notice that on the homework, all of the dot plots have a, uh, the axis is labeled from 50 up to 90 and there's a tick mark at like 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, and 90. If you would like to change that, you have two options. You can either click on the three bars under the graph and click on X axis. And I can start the minimum at 50, much like the graphs in my stat lab, and the maximum at 90. If you want to see the tick marks like in the graph, you have to type those in 50, comma, 55, comma, 60, comma, 65, comma, 70 comma 75 comma 80 comma 85 comma 90. So we should have a tick mark exactly where they show up in each of the graphs in my stat lab. So click OK. Now the dot plot looks a little more like the ones you see over here. Um, I see that there's one dot at 55 and two dots at 60. So I automatically know graph A is incorrect and graph D is incorrect. It has way too many at 60. Now, if you're not sure what these look like exactly, you can click on the magnifying glass and we can see that there's one dot at 60, I mean at 55, two dots at 60, and four dots at 65. And here, if, you, if it's too small to see, just make it bigger. And at 65, you can see there's one, two, three, four dots. And at 70, you can see there are two, matches up. At 75, there's three, just like over here. At 80, there's one, and at 85, there's one. It looks like this graph, graph B, matches up with the one that we got from StatCrunch. So let's check our answer and see. Great, it's fantastic, we got it correct. Now, then it, 
asks us to analyze the data. What does the dot plot suggest about the distribution of the high temperatures? And you can see that we have several at 65, we have four of them, and we have several at 75. So let's look at our choices. It says the actual high temperatures range from 55 to 85. That's true. They start at 55 and our last dot's at 85. With most readings in the 60 to 75 degree range. That looks pretty close. Between 60 and 75, that accounts for 2, plus 4 is 6, plus 2 is 8, 9, 10, 11. That's 11 of our 14 data points. So it appears most of our temperatures are in the 60 to 75 degree range. Let's just check the other choices to see. Ooh, less than 55. We don't have any. It says with most readings less than 55. We don't have any readings that are even 50, much less. Uh, we don't have anything less than 55. C says most readings in the 70 to 85. Well, between 70 to 85, we have 2 plus 3 is 5 plus 1 is 6, plus 1 is 7. That's only half our data, so that wouldn't be most. And D says with most readings greater than 85 degrees. Well, we don't have any readings that are greater than 85, so it still looks like our best choice is A. And you could see that over half, most of our temperatures, we counted them, 11 of our temperatures were in the 60 to 75 degree range. So let's check our answer. It says good job and we could move on to the next question. I hope this has helped uh, to show you how you could um, match up the graphs so that, I'm going to close that box so we can go back to the same question, that the gra how to check the graphs and match them up. Thank you for your time.